To begin this module, we will look at the structures located in the ear and the functions of each of those structures. The ear is the focus of this module because it contains the receptors for both hearing and equilibrium. So the ear is divided into three main regions, the external or outer ear, the middle ear, and the internal or inner ear. Very briefly, the external ear collects sound waves and channels these inwards. The middle ear conveys sound vibrations to this oval window. And the inner ear houses the receptors for hearing and equilibrium. Looking at this little image down here, you can see those three regions highlighted by the different colours. We have the external ear in yellow, the middle ear in blue, and the inner ear in pink. Focusing now on the external ear, and the external ear consists of the auricle, the external auditory canal, and the tympanic membrane. The auricle, which is sometimes also known as the pinna, is a flap of elastic cartilage shaped a little bit like the end of a trumpet and covered by skin. Ligaments and muscle attach the auricle to the head. So our auricle is this external portion here. The external auditory canal is a curved tube about two and a half centimeters long that lies within the temporal bone and leads to our tympanic membrane. It contains a few hair cells, as well as specialized sweat glands, which secrete earwax. The combination of the hair and the earwax helps prevent dust and foreign objects from entering our ear. The tympanic membrane, which is also known as the eardrum, is a thin partition between the external auditory canal and the middle ear. It forms the boundary between these two regions. Regarding the functions of these structures, to hear, sound waves are collected from our external environment and directed into our external auditory canal by our auricle. Aside from the protective function of the hair and the earwax, the external auditory canal also directs sound waves onto our tympanic membrane. The sound waves hit the tympanic membrane, which cause it to vibrate, and these vibrations are passed on to our middle ear. The tympanic membrane also plays a small role in protection, keeping bacteria and foreign objects out of this middle ear. The middle ear is a small air-filled cavity that also sits within our temporal bone. It's separated from the external ear by the tympanic membrane, and then from our internal ear by this thin piece of bone here, which has two small holes. The oval window, which is partially hidden by this bone, and then the round window, which sits just beneath it. Extending across, the middle ear and attached to both the middle ear and one another are the three smallest bones in the body. These bones collectively are called the auditory ossicles. So O, S, S, I, C, L, E, S. And individually, these bones are named for their shapes, are called the malleus, the incus and the stapes. So the head of the malleus articulates with the internal surface of the tympanic membrane. The other end articulates with the body of the incus. In turn, that articulates with the head of the stapes, and then the end of the stapes fits into the oval window. When our sound waves hit the tympanic membrane and cause it to vibrate, these three ossicles will subsequently vibrate, passing on those vibrations to the inner ear. The oval window, which is covered by a thin membrane to separate the middle ear from the inner ear, receive those vibrations, which lead to the movement of fluid within the inner ear and specifically within the cochlea. This round window below exists 
so that the fluid in the cochlea can actually move, so it has space to move, but we will talk more about this shortly. The anterior wall of the middle ear also contains an opening called either the auditory canal, the pharyngotympanic tube, or the eustachian tube. I'm happy for you to use whichever term makes more sense to you. This tube is made up of both bone and elastic cartilage, and it connects the middle ear with the nasopharynx, which is the very top part of your throat, just behind your nose. During swallowing and yawning, it opens, allowing air to enter or leave the middle ear until the pressure in that region equals atmospheric pressure. That feeling of your ears popping when you're on a plane or you drive up a big mountain is the pressure in your middle ear trying to equalize. If pressure cannot equalize, it can cause intense pain, hearing impairment, ringing in the ears, and also vertigo. And the auditory canal is particularly prone to infections given its close proximity to the nasopharynx and particularly in children whose auditory canal is quite short. The inner or the internal ear is also called the labyrinth and it sits deep within our temporal bone. It connects to the middle ear via the membrane that covers the oval window. So the membrane that's hidden here by the head of the stapes. Structurally, the inner ear consists of two parts, an outer bony labyrinth, which will be this dark brown part here, and also the yellow part on this side, and then an inner membranous labyrinth. So that's the pink parts, and the orange parts. The bony labyrinth is a series of cavities within the temporal bone that's divided into three areas, the three semicircular canals, the vestibule, which is this round middle portion, and the cochlea, which is this other portion, which looks a bit like a snail. The bony labyrinth contains perilymph, which is a fluid chemically similar to cerebrospinal fluid that surrounds the membranous labyrinth. The membranous labyrinth is a series of sacs and tubes that sit inside of the bony labyrinth and therefore form pretty much the same shapes. The membranous labyrinth house the receptors for both hearing and equilibrium and contain endolymph, which is another type of fluid, which is similar to our perilymph, but again, we'll talk more about shortly. So the vestibule is this middle portion of the inner ear here. Within the membranous labyrinth, it contains two sacs called the utricle and the saccule. The utricle and the saccule contain our receptors for static equilibrium. Projecting superiorly and posteriorly are our three bony semicircular canals, each of which lie at approximately right angles to one another. Based on their positions, they're named the anterior, the posterior and the lateral semicircular canals. And then within those bony semicircular canals are our semicircular ducts. So that's these pink portions inside. And at the end of each semicircular duct or semicircular canal is a swollen enlargement called the ampulla. And this is where we contain our receptors for dynamic equilibrium. Anterior to the vestibule is the cochlea. It's the bony spiral canal that resembles a snail shell. Inside of the cochlea are three channels which run lengthways. So just to show you what that looks on the inside, so you can see that the cochlea is divided into three channels. These are the cochlear duct, the scala vestibuli, and the scala tympani. 
And don't stress, we're going to go over these again and you'll have images where these are labelled shortly. The cochlear duct is a continuation of the membranous labyrinth within the cochlea. So it's filled with our endolymph. The channel above the cochlear duct is the scala vestibuli. This ends at the oval window. The channel below is called the scala tympani, which ends at the round window. Both of these two channels make up part of the bony labyrinth and are therefore filled with perilymph. Now resting on a membrane that sits on the bottom of the cochlear duct and which we'll talk more about shortly is our organ of corti, which is our receptor for hearing. So as a bit of a summary of the structures that I need you to be able to identify either on a model or an image, but then also provide a function for, we have all of those structures listed out here. So the auricle was that external portion of the ear. It directs sound waves to the external auditory canal. The external auditory canal, which direct the sound waves to the tympanic membrane and also play a role in protection with the hair and the earwax. The tympanic membrane, which is colloquially referred to as the eardrum and which vibrates in response to sound waves and also plays a small role in protection. Our auditory ossicles for those three tiny bones that transmit vibrations from the tympanic membrane into the middle ear. Individually, they're the malleus, the incus and the stapes. We have the oval window, which receives vibrations from the stapes and allows for fluid movement in the cochlea. The round window, which sits below and also allows for the fluid to move in the cochlea. auditory canal, which is also called the pharyngotympanic or the eustachian tube and allows for equalization of air pressure in the middle ear. The bony labyrinth, which makes out the outer bony layer of the inner ear and contains perilymph. The membranous labyrinth, which is that membranous inner layer and contains endolymph. Our semicircular canals, contain the receptors for dynamic equilibrium. Those are those three canals that lie in different planes. The vestibule was that rounded portion in the middle, which contains our receptors for static equilibrium. And then our cochlea, which is that portion that looks a little bit like a snail and contains our receptors for hearing.